Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank the committee oh, for hearing me today. Make sure your mic's on, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, my name is Scott Armstrong. I'm a professor at the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. As stated, the primary problem we're looking at today is what might happen to polar bears in the future. So I'm addressing this committee as an expert on forecasting. I've been working in the field for 48 years now. Please direct your attention to Exhibit 1. It's also in the report at the end. It's an unlabeled exhibit. The dots represent data points. And as you look at that, assume you had to forecast for the rest of the 21st century. Is it going up, down, staying the same? What's happening? I'll come back to that later in the talk. In the mid-1990s, I started a project, uh, Principles of Forecasting project. The idea was to summarize all the knowledge that we had about forecasting and transform these into scientific principles. Here's an example. Be, cons be conservative in situations involving uncertainty. The project led to my uh, handbook, Principles of Forecasting, in which 39 authors and 123 reviewers participated. Now, along with Dr. Keston Green and Dr. Willie Soon, I examined two of the reports we've been talking about today. These are the reports by Amstrup and Hunter. We looked at those because they're the ones most closely related to forecasting. We asked, did the author's procedures follow scientific principles? We made independent ratings, uh, discussed them over follow-up rounds, and reached agreement. Here's an example. Keep the forecast independent of organizational politics. We all rated that as a uh, contravention of the principle. Why? Because if you look at the front page of all these reports, they say that the purpose of the report is to support the polar bear listing decision. The reports involved a complex set of assumptions. In effect, they made assumptions where they should have made forecasts. The assumptions lacked validity, and we judged the reports to be invalid on that basis. But we went further. We said, well, what if all those assumptions were true? Did they at least use the proper methods to arrive at a polar bear forecast? I'd like you to uh, look at Exhibit 2. This shows the results of our audit. We found that the Amstrup uh, report contravened 41 of the principles, the Hunter report contravened 61, and so on down the line. What's most important to look at is how many principles did they really follow? And it turns out that they properly applied in the case of Amstrup 17, in the case of Hunter 10. Now, on a percentage basis, that means they followed 12% of the relevant principles. I wonder how many occupations there are in our country where you can uh, follow only 12% of the recommended policy and procedures. The forecast in those reports rested heavily on unaided judgment. By unaided expert judgment, I mean unaided by scientific principles. Now consider this. Unaided experts' forecasts are of no value when the situation is complex and uncertain. It's an astounding finding. I'll repeat, unaided expert forecasts are of no value when the situation is complex and uncertain. I ran across this in my long-range forecasting book in 1978. Dr. Tetlock recently came out with a massive 20-year study supporting this. Uh, his study involved over 80,000 forecasts. Please look again at the original unlabeled graph. I'm now going to show you how the administrative report forecasts that polar bear population would decrease rapidly. The graph relates to ice-free days, and it comes from one of the administration reports. They forecasted a sharp increase in ice-free days. How is that possible from the data? It's not possible. It only happened because they ignored the data. Instead, they relied on climate models. The climate models do not provide forecasts. They provide so-called scenarios. Now, let's examine the graph with labels. The filled-in dots that you will see show the data that were used to determine the relationship between ice-free days and the polar bear population. Five days. Now, is it possible to estimate this causal relationship with five days? five years of observations? The answer is no. 
The above analysis indicated contraventions of principles such as use all available important data, use the most recent data, use simple forecasting methods, and be conservative in cases of high uncertainty. I'd like to end on a very positive note. We know how to approach this problem in a scientific way. Okay, but you've got to be I, positive in just a few seconds, but go ahead. And I have uh, six recommendations for approaching this in a scientific manner. Okay, just First, give one sentence for each of them, and then you'll yes, have gone Yes, use over. a variety of forecasting methods. Generate a list of alternative solutions and prepare forecasts. Number three, commission forecasts by independent teams. Number four, promote collaboration among polar bear climate experts along with forecasting experts. Number five, require forecasts be based on audited methods and don't tolerate any contraventions. Number six, combine all forecasts based on procedures that pass the audit. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you so much.